No apes are living in North America. But why is this? Did they once roam there? And if so, what happened to them? Firstly, what are apes? Apes are a higher group of primates. They belong to the superfamily hominidae, which splits into the lesser apes and the great apes. This split occurred around 20 million years ago. 20 species of gibbon belong to the lesser apes, and the great apes include orangutans, gorillas, bonobos, chimpanzees, and, of course, humans. Some use the term monkey and ape interchangeably, but scientifically, this is incorrect. Apes do not have tails, whereas monkeys do. Also, apes are considered more intelligent than monkeys, who have more primitive brains. Apes are generally larger than monkeys, and although most can live in the trees, many spend a lot of their time on the ground. Apes are native to Sub-Saharan Africa and Southeast Asia. They once lived in Europe too, but none have ever lived in the Americas. If we travel back roughly 55 million years ago, then we can see the evidence of the first primate-like animals in North Africa. At the time of the first true primates emerging on the global stage, Africa and South America had drifted apart. The separation of these two continents occurred around 120 million years ago. So, the split of these two landmasses happened tens of millions of years before primates even existed. Although there are no non-human apes in North, Central, and South America, there is a variety of primate species inhabiting South and Central America. Primates include monkeys, as well as prosimians such as lemurs and lorises. Each South American primate is adapted to tropical rainforests. They include, but are not limited to, marmosets, capuchins, squirrel monkeys, sockies, spider monkeys, and howler monkeys. Collectively, these primates are known as the New World Monkeys. They split from their relatives in Africa approximately 40 million years ago. Those in Africa are known as the Old World Monkeys. It is generally accepted that all primates originated in Africa. So, how and when did South America's New World Monkeys come to live there? Did any of these primates travel northwards to North America? Recently, scientists found the fossilized teeth of ancient primates in the heart of the Peruvian jungle. The teeth were dated back to 37 million years ago and were analyzed to have come from a lineage of African primates. Around this time in Earth's history, the ice sheets at the poles were formed. More and more sea was locked up as ice, dramatically lowering the sea level. The journey from Africa, across the Atlantic Ocean, to South America was about a quarter of the distance it is now. This would have made the journey slightly easier. The monkeys likely traveled across the open water on vegetation rafts that broke off from the African coastline during storms and drifted out to sea. There is a suggestion that back when the sea levels were lower, there were islands and atolls in the mid-Atlantic, which are now submerged. These could have provided refuge for the primates as they drifted westwards to the New World. The geographical separation of the two groups of primates allowed for evolution in isolation from one another. The New World primates adapted to the environment of South America and the Old World primates to Africa and Asia. Monkeys developed and evolved in South America's tropical rainforests. For a long time, South America was cut off from the rest of the world. There was no connection between North and South America until the formation of the Panama Land Bridge. Before this, the wildlife in the South evolved in its unique way, similar to island continents such as Australia. But when North and South America became connected via the Isthmus of Panama four million years ago, there followed the Great American Biotic Interchange, where species could migrate between the two. Despite this, it seems most primates in South America remained there. They were well adapted to life in the rainforest. They must have had plenty of food and territory, with little competition, because it was rare for them to migrate northwards. Before the formation of Panama, there did seem to be some migration of primates into the north, perhaps by mistake. Crossing the open seas from the south to the north was no mean feat. They would have likely traveled unsuspectingly on floating rafts of vegetation, much the same way they did across the Atlantic from Africa. Scientists have discovered 21 million year old fossilized remains of a primate, similar to today's capuchins in North America. It is not known how long these primates lived in North America though. Likely, they may not have survived long, with few fossils found in Central and North America. 
It seems that the majority of New World monkeys didn't spread northwards due to the boundary of their rainforest habitat. This constrained them largely to South America and parts of Central America. Even today, they do not inhabit North America. So, we know apes never evolved in the Americas. But what do we know about their evolutionary history? There is always some debate about where apes evolved, but using a combination of molecular, fossil, and biogeographical analysis, scientists believe that the Old World primates, including the lineage that went on to become today's great apes and humans, dispersed from Africa into Europe and Asia 20 million years ago. They then migrated back to Africa 10 million years ago. Although it is generally accepted that apes originated in Africa, if you travel far enough back in time, to around 40 million years during the Eocene, they had a common ancestor in Asia. This was long before apes and monkeys existed, but it was called Afrasia de Gigidae. It was a tiny early primate approximately 100 grams, or 3.5 ounces in weight. It is thought that this primate-like animal may have drifted to Africa from Asia over the open seas much the same way the New World monkeys traveled to South America later on. From Africa, the apes that eventually evolved migrated. The fossil record shows that apes once lived in Europe, although there aren't any native apes living there today. They seem to have evolved in Europe, having migrated from Africa, before returning to Africa. At the time, Europe offered subtropical forests, the right climate, and plentiful food. Apes likely left Europe and returned to Africa during the late Miocene. At this time, Europe's climate changed dramatically. The rise of the Himalayas in Asia resulted in a much cooler and drier European continent, and subtropical forests gave way to deciduous woodland. The only way for apes to survive was to head south, back to Africa. But there is so much more to our ancestor story. Scientists believe that apes split from the Old World monkey lineage around 25 million years ago. Around 20 million years ago, a primate emerged in Central Africa, which is thought to have been the link between monkeys and apes. It was known as Proconsul, to which four species belonged. Its posture was similar to that of a monkey, but it lacked a tail, had an ape-like facial structure, and had the hand grip of an ape. It is debated whether this animal was the link between the two primates, but regardless, it is classified as the earliest known ape to have existed. Between 9 and 17 million years ago, apes from the genus Dryopithecus were living in both Africa and Asia. It is thought that all modern-day great apes are descended from this genus, and those living in Asia went on to become the orangutans that we know today, whilst those in Africa became the other great apes. While orangutans were evolving in Asia, so too was the largest ape to have ever walked the earth. Gigantopithecus stood at 10 feet, or 3 meters tall, and weighed up to 1,100 pounds, or 500 kilograms. It was a giant. It mostly fed on fruit, and whilst its huge size likely protected it from potential predators, it also led to its demise. As the earth's climate changed, and the rainforest gave way to savannas, the huge volumes of fruit required for such an animal to survive dried up. They were less able to adapt their diets to take in the roots and shoots of a changing landscape. Furthermore, larger animals tend to have fewer offspring, and so their population size was relatively small compared to smaller primates. Extinction rates increased as body size increases. This is why their relatives, the orangutans, managed to survive while they didn't. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.